no place for it in the business. Um, uh, when you look at Ray Mysterio Jr. and you see a guy that's five foot four, five six, whatever, and, you know, 150, 60, 70 pounds, I don't think there's one person sitting out there going, man, if he was just 20 pounds bigger or heavier, or if his biceps were just a little bit bigger, or if his abs were just a little bit sharper. Uh, uh, the performance is is what it is. It doesn't, you know, a hot dog's a hot dog. If you put it on a bun, if you put it on a plate, it's still a hot dog. And uh, when you put a great performer in the ring, it doesn't matter. Dominic Tanucci taught me something. The first one of the first days I went to his ring, uh, to his gym, he said, "You could have the best ring jacket and the and the coolest hippest music, but when you walk down that ramp and you get in that ring and you take the ring jacket off and the music stops, you damn well better know how to perform." Uh, I don't think the steroids make Ray Mysterio Jr. or anybody else in the dressing room a better or worse performer. The performance comes from the heart and it comes from what they naturally are gifted with from God. So if they can capitalize on that, what's the necessity for it? You know, and, and uh, you know, a little side note, you know, if, if I can, you know, stand, you know, go to my podium for once, you know, it's, uh, you know, when you see Vince McMahon rewarding that, if, uh, you know, if, I, if I'm the shepherd and I've got a bunch of sheep in my dressing room and I'm rewarding them for taking the steroids, for having a bigger body, or looking a little bit bigger, or a little bit sharper than they than they have before. The message I send to the entire dressing room and to every kid in the country and around the planet that wants to aspire to one day be a WWE superstar, the message is as big as can be. Might as well put it in, up on Broadway in bold neon lights. Take steroids because everybody that does excels and makes a big paycheck. Only when they stop doing that. Will it, will it change? It is, it's human nature. If that's the path that I got to take, I'm going to take it. Uh, you know, they have the drug testing up there, and you know, the FBI called me after the whole Benoit fiasco, and uh, he said, well, "Well, Chris Benoit just passed the drug test on April 4th or whatever it was, whatever the date was." And I looked at him and I, I laughed. I said, "Do you honestly believe that? I mean, it tells you something that's going on there. It tells you that the tests are being fudged because nobody was bigger or smaller before or after those tests." Uh, and had they been doing true drug testing, they might have been able to avert what happened. Who knows that day? I mean, whether it was the drugs or not, who knows? We'll never know. But the drugs have no place in the business. Steroids is one of the drugs. The drugs in our business have decimated, decimated our brothers and sisters in this business. I mean, there are 61 people since I broke into the wrestling business that are in graves now way too early because of those drugs. And the reason of taking those drugs, not because we're a bunch of drug addicts or a bunch of losers that can't do anything else. We're very talented people that are put under incredible pressures, having to be up at 4, 4.30 in the morning, fly halfway across the country or around the planet, get there, drive two or 300 miles to wrestle. When you get there, you get the luxury of getting hit over there with a chair or slammed through a table on concrete. Then you gotta drive two or 300 miles back and get, if you're lucky enough to suck down some food someplace during the day, uh, then you have to get back to the hotel and get up in an hour or two because you've got an early morning flight the next day to do it. There's a human being that listening to this right now, looking at that camera, there's a human being sitting out there that wants to sit there and say, oh, those wrestlers, they deserve it. They're a bunch of drug addicts. There's not a human being watching this right now that can sit there and say, realistically, in the same situation that they wouldn't eventually drink something, take something, smoke something, shoot something, pop something. Not a human being that can go through the rigors of that business at the level that they have to on that national level day after day, month after month, year after year, that wouldn't take something to try to A, ease the pain, B, dull the boredom and the, tenac and the uh, tedium of, the, of being on the road. It's not a bunch of drug addicts in the wrestling business. It's a bunch of human beings making a living that are forced to do those things because the business is running them to the nub. That's what, what it is. So if you want to blame that on Vince McMahon or whomever, but it's real simple to solve. Give the guys and the girls some time off. Give them an opportunity to take time off if they're injured without worrying about somebody else stealing their spot or taking their position, and i.e. their paycheck. Give them that off time so they can rehab themselves uh, physically to get back in the ring. And that'll also take care of the secondary problem, the tedium of being on the road. And you're away from your family for weeks and months on end and seeing, having no real life outside of the ring because this business consumes your life, then that stuff will start to fall by the wayside. Until you do that, you can rehab everybody through every drug rehab in the planet. It's not going to fix it until you solve those problems. You put a Band-Aid on a bullet wound. And until they solve those things, it's never going to happen. There will be another 61 people that die through this business, and it's going to keep on going until they finally look at the, at the root causes.